So Pro Tools 11 is out, upgraded. And I'm gonna show you some of the things I like about it. There's so many features in Pro Tools 11. I don't wanna cover them all. You could try this out yourself, but I wanna show you what I like about it. Some of the major key points in Pro Tools 11. So let's start off with my favorite. So let's start off with one of my favorite things that they added to Pro Tools 11. It's dynamic plugin processing. Basically, let's do the classic reverb or deverb test. All right, let's see if this works this time. My screen capture program also has certain shortcuts, so it conflicts sometimes when I'm making these videos. All right, so check this out. This is normal, right? How about that? You see all these plugins that I got here? Look at the metering. Basically, hardly, it's not doing anything. But if I press play, still, it's pretty low, and that's because I have audio on only one track. But let's consolidate some random part here and let's see what happens. Now, let's play. Well, let's give this some time, let's play. And as you can see, everything went up. So if I go right here, let's uh, move this here. Actually, let's go right here. Let's see what happens. Now it does take a little while for it to uh, kick in. So it calculates and it does whatever it's doing and it figures out there's no audio there. And it brings it back. So in the real world, how many of us working with a track that's 30, 40 tracks long and you have that one part that has, uh, let's say, somebody clapping and they're only clapping maybe in the middle somewhere or in the first uh, couple of bars. You got all those plugins on that track. Let's say you got a compressor, an EQ, or whatever on that clap track. Whenever the clap happens, that's it. But those plugins are still processing nothing. You know, I have a four core processor. You got these computers now with multiple CPUs, with multiple cores. And my computer compared to some of the computers now, it's nothing. But, you know, four cores is better than nothing. And this computer can still pack a uh, nice punch with this dynamic plug-in processing going on here it just it completely changes everything it's like having freeze track something we always wanted within pro tools so here's what we're going to do we're going to get rid of all of this and i also want to get rid of all these uh d-verbs another thing that they added we have a master meter here normally we would scroll all the way down to go all the way to the master to see our overall level or we come here to the mixer to check our master. And now that we're in the mixer window, you see the change, right? They gave the mixer a little facelift. They gave the faders a new look. They also gave the metering a new look, but this is pretty interesting. If you right click, you're gonna see some new options here. Sample pack, Pro Tools Classic, Venue Peak, Venue uh, RMS. So let's go through them. I'm not gonna explain what they do. You could Google this, you should know. Nice. Let's go back to the main window. And let's go to setup. If we go to setup and we go to playback engine, there's something else that's new here. Besides dynamic plugin processing, they also added this video engine. Basically, Avid also has an application called Media Composer. It's a video industry uh, editing software. They took the video engine from there and added that video engine to Pro Tools 11, which is awesome. I haven't tried it yet. I'm pretty sure Pro Tools will handle video files a lot better than it did in the past. Now, since this application is 64-bit ready, if you have 100 gigs of RAM, now you can access every single bit of RAM you have in your computer. Another thing, a lot of you guys were telling me that I was wrong about RTAS. It's going to be in Pro Tools 11 and TDM and all of that. Listen, it's gone. There's no TDM and there's no RTAS. It's all 64-bit. Your AAX 32-bit plugins won't even work inside of Pro Tools 11. Pro Tools 10 and Pro Tools 11 installed on my system. I'm running Windows 8. We all know that Pro Tools 10 is in Windows 8 ready, so if you wanna know how to do that, there's gonna be an annotation somewhere on the screen. Click that, it's gonna take you to that video. Follow those instructions and you'll get it to work. Now, Pro Tools 11 is ready. It will work on the Windows 8. No problems, you don't gotta do anything. Just double click, install, good to go. But if you wanna get both of them to install on the same system, you have to upgrade Pro Tools 10 to 10.3.6, uh, I believe. 
If I got that wrong, I'll update it on the screen somewhere. But you need to update your version to that. I almost forgot to show you the main thing that they added within our Pro Tools 11. Let's uh, go all the way to, let's say, right here. This is about, actually, 50 minutes right here. Let's consolidate. All right, so all the tracks are consolidated. I know I really only needed to consolidate track one. I didn't realize, but it's okay. So basically it's 50 minutes. So let's check out the new bounce to disc function. Check this out. We have an offline bounce function, which is amazing, which is great. Before we would have to go in real time. And if in the middle of your session, you hear something you don't like, you gotta stop it, edit, start from the beginning again. But now with this offline option, it'll do it really quick. So let's choose uh, the desktop, it's already there. I called it test 101. But also now you have the little option here, add MP3. So you're bouncing your wave and it's creating an MP3 at the same time. So let's go ahead and bounce. Now I'm not gonna go through the whole thing, but this will show you, look how quick it is. So this is a feature that we all wanted for a very long time. We finally got it. And if you never use Pro Tools, let me show you what happens if you do it without the offline bouncing. 50 minutes, you see that? It's insane. We all have been there though. We all had sessions and we had to uh, leave Pro Tools overnight or we just had to sit here and listen to everything, make sure everything worked. There was some workarounds, but whatever. And we all know what's going on with the iLock at the moment. Although, like I said, it seems like they're fixing all these issues. Those guys are pretty good with uh, technical support. Got to give it to them. They're working 24 hours to get the iLock to work the way it used to work. The new iLock manager is pretty awesome. I do like it. You gotta expect it. There are some bugs in the system, kind of working all of that out. So I think it's safe to go ahead and try it. And if you do run into any issues, just email those dudes. Those guys will help you out. And let me know what you guys think. Let me know what's your favorite feature within Pro Tools 11. And again, I know I missed a couple of things. For example, we have satellite now in Pro Tools. I never used that option. Some of you guys might use the satellite option. Before you had to pay for this option, now it's included within Pro Tools 11. So there's a lot of other features there that I'm not covering. But anyway guys, this is Ray. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Somewhere in the screen, the subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, read the description, follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Google+, and I'm out of here. Later guys.